The coming Martin Luther King holiday is a day to commemorate the life and legacy of a man whose fight for equality for African Americans ended with an assassin's bullet. Dr. King was murdered on the Lorraine Motel balcony in Memphis, Tennessee on April 4, 1968. His death set off days of rioting in cities across America. It also inspired Jane Elliott, an elementary school teacher in Riceville, Iowa, to try a controversial classroom experiment, treating children as inferior or superior based solely on the color of their eyes. Our correspondent Jessica Gomez traveled back to Iowa to talk to Jane Elliott, now 84 years old, about why her exercise is as relevant today as it was 50 years ago. Jane Elliott was a young third grade teacher in rural Iowa when she heard the news. Martin Luther King Jr. had been assassinated. I was absolutely heartbroken. He had been one of our heroes of the month in February. As chaos broke out in big cities far away, Elliott wondered how she would explain to her students what happened to their hero of the month. I decided I was going to allow them to walk in the shoes of a person of color in this country for a day. This is a special week. Does anybody know what it is? What she did next was captured in this ABC documentary, filmed just two years later, the brown-eyed, blue-eyed exercise. Is there anyone in the United States that we do not treat as our brothers? Yeah. Who? Yeah. The, black yeah. the black people. It might be interesting to judge people today by the color of their eyes. Would you like to try this? Yeah. I was going to pick out a group of people on the basis of a physical characteristic over which they had absolutely no control. I was going to assign negative traits to them because of that physical characteristic and that physical characteristic alone. And since I'm blue-eyed and most of the students in this room are blue-eyed, brown-eyed people are going to be on the top the first day. The brown-eyed people get five extra minutes of recess. You blue-eyed people are not allowed to be on the playground equipment at any time. And within seven minutes, I had created a superior brown-eyed group who were convinced of their own superiority. A few days later, Elliot switched it up. Blue-eyed people may go back for seconds. Brown-eyed brown people do not. not. Brown Don't you know? Oh, smart. Still pictures capture visible changes in Jane's students before and after they were discriminated against just because of the color of their eyes. It was after her students wrote essays about their experiences that word got out. Jane's exercise made national news. Documentaries, TV appearances, and books were to follow. The nation was interested in Jane Elliott. Still, there was backlash. And then my kids got beaten. My parents lost their business, and people would call in and say, don't put my kid in that N-word lover's classroom. This is Riceville Elementary School today. In Jane Elliott's old third grade classroom, much has changed. Tables have replaced the desks. The whiteboard has replaced the blackboard. Riceville is still almost all white. In fact, Mitchell County has one of the smallest minority populations in the country. Did Jane Elliott's exercise leave an imprint here? Farmer Rick Sletton was in that third grade class back in 1968. I remember when I was at college that I had African-American friends and I thought, huh, I wonder if I treat them differently because of this experiment or not. I don't know. I don't know, I just treated them like everybody else. Elliot, who says she was disowned by her own mother because of the negative attention, eventually moved away from Riceville and went on to become a sought after national anti-racism educator and activist. To this day, sharing her exercise with those who are willing to participate. I have the right to say what I want to do, to go where I want to go, to be what I want to be. Not until everybody has that right will I stop doing what I'm doing. And Elliot says in recent months she's realized just how much more work needs to be done. It is more acceptable to express your racism today than it was in 1968. This country is in danger of losing its democracy because of the willingness of people to see skin color as a negative. Okay, now are you back? Yeah. Yeah. Elliot wishes every third grader could see through what she calls magic eyes. 
And if we had every third grade teacher in the United States of America doing that exercise, we could wipe out racism in two to three generations. In Riceville, Iowa, for Matter of Fact, I'm Jessica Gomez.